The Congress of the Chinese Communist Party is wrapping up after a week of meetings and it's going to anoint its new leadership over the next couple of days. For his thoughts on this, I spoke to Professor Ross Garno a little bit earlier in the day. Professor Garno is a former Australian ambassador to China. He was the author of the seminal paper, Australia and the Northeast Asian Ascendancy, a professorial fellow at the University of Melbourne and also a distinguished professor of economics at the ANU. And I spoke to Professor Professor Garno from the University of Melbourne earlier in the day. Professor Ross Garno, thank you very much for your time. This transition in Beijing, the transition once in a decade of its leadership, is uh, is almost complete. What do we know about the uh, the anointed successor Xi Jinping? Well. Uh Personally, I, I have to say uh, that uh, Xi Jinping is the uh, first general secretary of the party since uh, Hua Guofeng in the 70s that I haven't known personally. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so this isn't a personal ob observation, but he's uh, got a very strong Communist Party pedigree. Uh, he's uh, been safe hands in a number of uh, senior uh, roles uh, in, in government and the party. Uh, he uh, will have uh, broadly based support within the party. Uh, and sh so he should be in a position uh, confidently to, uh, uh, to, to go about consolidating the important changes in policy that uh, have uh, been discussed and started to be implemented over the last few years. He's what the Chinese describe as a, a princeling, the next generation uh, of, uh, of their first leaders under the, the Communist Party. What does it say about his worldview? Do you think we should expect or anticipate any major shift in policy? Well, uh, the, the uh, category uh, princeling uh, incorporates a, a wide range of uh, ideological perspectives. Uh, uh, the the, the uh, breadth of the range uh, uh, is uh, demonstrated in, in, in what John Garner has been writing for the Age and the Sydney Morning Herald. Uh, uh, you, you get uh, amongst that category of people uh, some who uh, have some nostalgia for, uh, uh, for for older and simpler times in the Chinese Communist Party. You get some uh, who uh, are st quite strongly uh, committed to political institutional reform, some very strongly committed to uh, uh, restoring momentum in, in economic reform. So the fact that they're children of uh, uh, powerful Communist Party figures of earlier generations doesn't determine a particular uh, ideological out, uh, outlook. It does mean uh, that, uh, uh, that that Xi Jinping uh, and also uh, the the Premier, the likely Premier Li Keqiang, uh, will uh, uh, will share similar backgrounds, uh, similar earlier life experiences with uh, a lot of other people in the leadership. That will probably be a source of. Uh, of political strength within the Communist Party, it may increase their uh, capacity to uh, to move ahead with uh, support and confidence in in uh, uh, implementing uh, uh, reforms. Uh, but uh, being a princeling uh, doesn't, in itself, uh, give you a particular set of uh, reform objectives. How much do you think depends on the makeup of the Politburo? That's to be unveiled as I understand it as well, on, uh, on Thursday with the new leadership, because the, that cabinet or that central decision-making body is, is much more powerful than it, than it used to be in the sense that the president um, isn't all powerful as they once were. I think it's always been the case that, uh, uh, that, that quite a few people uh, in the top echelons of the Communist Party can be influential uh, if they've uh, got clear thoughts on where they want to take things uh, and uh, have a, uh, uh, a capacity for, for leadership. Uh, I'm not sure that that's changed fundamentally uh, uh, in, the, in the past uh, generation. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly the membership of the Politburo uh, will be important. Uh, but I, I think the broad shape of, uh, of policy change uh, over the period ahead is uh, uh, is reasonably clear. Uh, there's actually been a, a, a substantial change uh, with uh, President uh, Hu Jintao and uh, Premier uh, Wen Jiabao. Uh, we, we've seen, uh, especially in recent years, uh, a, a stronger focus on um, uh, social equity, uh, concern to reduce the uh, uh, 
uh, the tendency for uh, inequality of uh, incomes and uh, wealth to rise over time, uh, a greater environment on uh, uh, the rural standard of living and provision of services to uh, uh, people in, in rural areas, uh, and uh, a greater uh, focus on environmental amenity, uh, both locally in China and uh, China's contribution to a stable global uh, uh, environment, uh, especially climate. Uh, China is a big ship. The Chinese economy and society is a big ship, uh, slow to change. I think uh, Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao uh, have done more than they're currently given credit for uh, in changing thinking uh, about directions uh, of the economy and, and society. Uh, and the new leadership uh, will be in a strong position to, to build on that change. The, the ship started to turn. Uh, I expect the, the, uh, the turning to uh, go much further uh, and for China to uh, start gaining steam uh, uh, in the new directions uh, under the new leadership. We've obviously seen that uh, dramatic opening of the economy and liberalisation of the Chinese economy over recent decades. Can you give us a sense of just how much pressure there is on the leadership to liberalise the political system. You referred to your son John Garno's writing recently. He did write um, in one of the pieces about uh, Her D's um, Boyan Foundation, a, a think tank essentially operating under the radar to try and pressure the Chinese leadership to pursue um, well free markets and, and democracy. When, when we're talking about liberalisation and democracy in China, is it, is it the same sort of democracy that we're talking about in Australia, or, or what sort of um, opening of the political system are we actually expecting or um, see as realistic? Yes, uh, uh, well, it's natural for when you get such big changes in, uh, in the economic uh, uh, structures of society for there to be pressure for, for political change. And there actually has been immense change. Uh, since the reforms began in, in 78. Uh, uh, the personal freedoms of Chinese have expanded beyond recognition uh, over the past uh, 30 years. Uh, at uh, lower levels of government, uh, the influence of, uh, uh, of citizens uh, on policy outcomes has become stronger. Uh, and when citizens these days uh, uh, aren't able to influence outcomes, they get pretty stroppy about it, let their views be known. Uh, uh, there are high-profile disputes that uh, uh, the leadership uh, in Beijing recognises uh, it, it has to deal with. Different question uh, about uh, directions of change in a high political superstructure. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, mantra of the Communist Party is that that won't change, that uh, the, the primacy of, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, Communist Party will be maintained. Uh, there's talk about uh, uh, freeing up of processes, more competitive processes within the Communist Party itself, but uh, uh, there's not a lot of discussion within the top leadership uh, about uh, uh, multiple political parties uh, competing uh, for power. Uh, there's a, a very interesting, uh, I think exciting, uh, ferment uh, uh, going on uh, within in China. Uh, intellectuals talking about the future shape of uh, Chinese political structure, uh, the idea, the word democratization, the idea of democratization uh, uh, crops up frequently uh, in conversation. Uh, but uh, not many Chinese uh, think that it would be wise for China simply uh, to adopt uh, a carbon copy uh, of uh, Western models of um, institutional democracy. I remember a conversation a couple of decades ago I had with uh, President Jiang Zemin about precisely this point. Uh, he said then that uh, uh, he wouldn't want China to uh, adopt uh, Western democratic institutions because uh, they make it so easy for money to buy policy, money to buy uh, politics. Uh, and he, he uh, distinguished uh, that sort of situation from, uh, uh, from true de democratic influence. China will have all of these sorts of debates. What comes out of it, <coughs> I'm pretty sure, will be uh, a system in which citizens uh, have stronger influence over uh, uh, who forms the leadership, what uh, sorts of policies are adopted. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting uh, for uh, uh, the uh, institutionalization of, in China of, uh, of the particular forms uh, of uh, competitive democracy that uh, uh, we've become familiar with in the West.
A couple of um, issues to, to finish, if I can. The, the handling of the, the case around the disgraced politician Bo Chi Lai, what have you made of that, the way it's been handled through the courts? Does it reflect, do you think, an increased willingness to embrace the rule of law in China? Well, if you compare it with comparable episodes in earlier generations of leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, uh, uh, you'd have to say that. Uh, uh, and that's part of a more general uh, uh, tendency to, uh, uh, to, to, to accept and, and to seek a, uh, a larger uh, role for the rule of law. Uh, larger uh, uh, is a comparative word and uh, uh, we, we all know that there's a long way to go, uh, big limitations on the reach of the, the rule of law in China, but uh, processes of, uh, of dealing with uh, Bo Xi Lai uh, uh, are at least uh, in an encouraging direction. Uh, more, more generally, uh, uh, the, uh, the change of leadership in China uh, in an authoritarian uh, political uh, party uh, is always a fraught uh, process. Uh, there's no uh, accepted legitimate uh, processes uh, for uh, uh, selecting leadership, so necessarily uh, the, there's internal struggle and uh, uh, outcomes uh, are often uh, not all that clear. Uh, that's more obvious in this uh, transition than in earlier ones. Uh, Jiang Zemin became uh, uh, a general secretary uh, because uh, Deng Xiaoping, the, uh, uh, the, the, the grand figure with, a, with legitimacy established by his role in the revolution and in the early uh, communist years, uh, 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 played the, the key role in anointing uh, Jiang. Uh, uh, Hu Jintao uh, emerged um, uh, with uh, anointment from uh, earlier generations of leaders uh, uh, amongst whom Deng Xiaoping was significant. This is the first uh, uh, transition to a new general secretary uh, that does not uh, carry here an anointment from uh, the revolutionary generation. So this was always going to be a a more challenging one, uh, the fact that uh, China seems to have got through it with, uh, without a bigger disruption than we've seen uh, uh, is uh, uh, a, a good sign for stability. And finally, we've seen some tensions in the South China Sea and elsewhere in terms of uh, China's foreign policy. Would you expect a more uh, assertive China on the international stage under the new leadership? I think that as China uh, grows more powerful economically, larger economically, it's inevitable that uh, its weight in the international political system will grow. Uh, it, it's uh, a natural outcome of growing economic strength uh, and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the polity, the community of China uh, w would expect uh, a uh, rise in uh, China's uh, uh, economic and strategic weight to be uh, accompanied by uh, greater influence in international affairs. So I think that's a secular trend uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that's just going to be part of the backdrop of international relations uh, for a, a long time into the future. Uh, that, that means that uh, uh, China will, uh, uh, whether it likes it or not, uh, come to uh, accept um, uh, uh, greater leadership responsibilities in the great global issues uh, like uh, uh, strategic uh, stability and the world as a whole, uh, including issues of nuclear proliferation, uh, issues like uh, climate change, uh, stabilisation of uh, the global uh, in climate in ways that are consistent with uh, maintenance of uh, economic prosperity in the world. Uh, so uh, uh, China uh, will be called upon to accept, uh, to accept greater responsibilities in these areas. Uh, and uh, all of the international as well as domestic pressures uh, will be in the direction of uh, causing it to accept those responsibilities. Professor Ross Garno, I appreciate your time and your insights. Thanks so much. Good to talk to you, Karen.